I, I love the premise of the show. Smart people talking about dumb shit. I think it's dumb people talking about smart shit. Oh, we go where we not supposed to go, baby. The Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast, and this week's episode is brought to you by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. There are no hidden fees or price hikes, and all websites are optimized for mobile. And it's so simple. Start with a design template and use drag-and-drop tools to make it your own. Head to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code idiot to save 10% off your first purchase. Now let's start the show. Uh, Happy to be here, man. What's happening, Schultz? <laughs> <laughs> what I miss? No, I didn't miss anything. I uh, didn't know if I felt the, uh, I believed the energy. No, I believe I you're happy to be here, but I think there are other things that are bothering you. That's what I sent. I have nothing. Oh, you know, my neck? Because I slept wrong. Oh, really? <laughs> so yesterday I was doing the, uh, what's that shit called? The Theragun? Yeah. I was doing that shit all day yesterday after I worked out. And then um, my wife has this other thing where they put like, it's like they put these pads on you and it's like electric shocks. Oh, wow. Oh, that shit feels so good. But my neck still like got a crook. Fucked up. And then I got to go. Um, I got a, a colon- colonoscopy consultation today. Oh, sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 How are you doing? It? I feel good. I just, you know, so I'm ready to go get it done so I can go get the colonoscopy over with. That's the crazy thing. I don't know. Maybe we've spoken about this, but like the second you get enough money to stop worrying about money, your body starts falling apart. <laughs> there's never not something to worry about. Like, I know there's young people listening to this right now. They're like, oh, I'm going to get enough money and then nothing matters. No, the second you get that money, no, your balls, you got to get checked for cancer, your asshole for fucking cancer. You're worried about your lungs, your skin, everything. That's why they say health is wealth. Health is wealth. I don't give a fuck how much money you got if you're not healthy yeah. and you can't enjoy it. Yeah. God right. bless Steve Jobs. Like, Yeah, he was stubborn, huh? What happened? He refused to uh, do uh, chemo or anything like oh, that. I didn't he know what it was. Natural. Just, oh, he tried to do like natural remedies. And nah, shit. not with that kind of money. With that kind of money, I need. I'm tr- matter of fact, I'm trying everything. 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 Give everything. me some chemo, but then I'm gonna still do the. I'm gonna get that ke- organic like, the stuff. Good chemo. I'm going to like Chernobyl. Yes, I'm gonna go. <laughs> I'm gonna try some like <laughs> yes. mushrooms right out the ground. Yes. In Chernobyl. Why bro. wouldn't you? Like, <laughs> yeah. if you got access to those kind of resources, man, you should have access to the best medical care on the planet. Like. Yeah. Who got the highest rates of curing this shit? Yeah. That's where I need to be. Yeah. You know? So other than that, I feel great. Well, good. So uh, we, we missed the episode last week. Yeah. Because of technical difficulties. We recorded one. You was in Atlanta, though, right? Yeah. Yeah. Shooting a movie? Yes. Yes. Can you say what movie? Yeah, it's called Underdogs. Oh, that's the one with Snoop. It's one with Snoop. And it's basically like uh, Bad News Bears, but for Pee Wee League football. And it's a Kenya Bears production. Kenya Bears production, man. And, uh, yeah, so it's great, man. This a you got a big role in this one though. This one's cool. This one's cool. It's bigger. It's yeah, bigger. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. It's fun. So basically, I, Snoop is the coach of the uh, Bad News Bear team, the underdogs, and I'm the coach of like the bougie team. Oh, uh, got you, yeah. got you, got you, got you. So I just get to be an asshole. Okay. Yeah. Typecast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sometimes they take it too far, bro. <laughs> what do you mean in the script? Yeah, but it's, nah, the, it's the be, it's the script. Not, not the script. Not, not the script. Like their suggestions. Like I'm supposed to be like an asshole, you know, like kind of conservative guy. <laughs> Give me an example. And then you try to like throw pins on me and shit like that. They'd be like, pins. what about a Blue Lives Matter pin? I'd be like, all right, all right, all right. It's Just a relax. movie. It's relax, bro. It's a movie, man. <laughs> Liking the cops doesn't make you a villain. Nah, but that's I, what I'm saying. But I guess it, I guess nowadays it's like a, a I don't know. It's like I don't want to say it's, I don't want to say stereotyping, but yeah, it's stereotyping. yeah, it is stereotyping. You Talking know about mean? stereotyping, that's why I hope the Yeezys don't become a symbol of hate. Ooh, <laughs> 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 I do, that's a hot. I hope they don't use that one yet. You use that one yet. I don't know, maybe. Yeah, I, don't know. Oh, oh, I don't think I don't so. Know, maybe. Right. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, don't that's know. a fire bar. So wait, are the Yeezys the new MAGA hat? I don't think they're the MAGA hat. What are they? You know why they're not the MAGA hat? Because too many people like them. <laughs> Yo, a lot of people like that MAGA hat, bro. <laughs> not, it's not a diverse audience, though. Ah, uh, You know yes, what I'm yes, saying? Yes, like yes, a diverse yes, yes. group of people like Yeezys. Like, yeah. you could walk in the room and the Asian kid might have Yeezys on. Yeah. The Jewish kid might have Yeezys yeah. on. The kid from Scotland might have Yeezys on. The black kid might have Yeezys on. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, I hear and that. And they vary. Like, when I pick my daughter up from high school, 
All of the kids are wearing some and form of Yeezy. They're comfy. They're comfy. That's the point. It's hard to hate Jews and and shoes that are comfy. Oh, you know what I mean. <laughs> That's the point. You know, what do you mean? What do you mean? They're comfortable. What you just said. Right, right. And then right. everybody like, now nah, buy some Crocs, and I'm like, Nah, Crocs go. They probably do, but they don't look like like La Russell was making Crocs fly. I'm not gonna fly. Yo, Crocs like, are fire. La Russell bro. be wearing Crocs and they be looking high, but I just can't see myself in no Crocs. Yeezys are still like for like the the hip hop dad. The old head that's Ooh. 40 something and you a father, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But you still got the Yeezys on, they comfortable. Yeah. But you can pull up to your kid's school, the kid's like, oh, you got the Yeezys on, you know what I mean? Yeah. I like to, I like to slide. Do you have an obligation to the people that buy your shit to not become like a racist and anti Semite? Yes. Because if I got tons yes. of pictures with Yeezy shit on, like, yes. like what if some of like my favorite pictures that I got up around my house and events I've been to, I got Yeezys on and now I gotta crop my feet out the pictures so I don't look like a Nazi? It's strange, right? Because it's like just from a straight business perspective, it's just terrible business. Yeah. What did Michael Jordan say back in the day? <laughs> he said, uh, conservatives are better at everything. Oh, he didn't say that. Wait, he what he said, say? conservatives buy shoes too, or Republicans yeah, 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 buy yeah. shoes too. I'm, he said, I'm not a liberal cuck. That's what he said? Didn't he say that? Didn't he say, what do I look like, a liberal cuckold? He did, for real? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't who, believe. I don't who know am he I? Said who I am I? I definitely know he said the thing about the sneakers. I don't know about the liberal cuck shit. No, he didn't say that. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> this guy. Yeah, I don't know about the liberal cuck shit. But yeah, man, I mean, it's crazy, right? Um, we got we to gotta add wild quotes to MJ. That'd be really fun. Wild quotes to yeah, just, like, just put the memes up. Yeah, yeah. By the way, these kids will believe them. They will, in a heartbeat. Oh, my God. But go on, you were saying? No, I was just saying, like, it was interesting, right? Because, you know, uh, first of all, I'm already on record saying Kanye West is a Nazi. Woo! You know what I'm saying? My, 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 my name for him is KK Kanye. If you attack black people and Jewish people in the same week, you're a Nazi. Whoa. That's just, it's, Whoa! Yeah, isn't, isn't that the pure definition of Nazi? Dude, Chris's laptop <laughs> flew off of his pecker, dude. The second you said that. But isn't that the pure definition of Nazism? What, if you hate uh, Jews Black people and, black and people? Jewish people in the yeah. same week? Yeah. yeah. Right? He's echoing a lot of Nazi sentiments for sure. Yeah, yes. I just don't. My only thing with Kanye is I don't think he's ever had an original thought in his life. He's not a free thinker so, at all. No, I think he's a genuinely he's just like a, a, a megaphone and he just puts the megaphone up to whoever's around him and then just repeats it. He is, in his essence, a producer. Kanye doesn't make all the sounds. He hears sounds that were already on hit records and then applies them to a record that he makes a hit. Yeah. But he's not creating all these from now, scratch. Now, I'm not going I'm not going to go that far with the music. I mean, I agree. What I'm saying is in his life, he's very used to grabbing things from other people that he Absolutely. thinks sounds good and grabbing styles from other people and then putting them out. Like so, so he's it's had, not. He's, a, he's, he's notorious for having ghostwriters. We know this, and he's not. He, he admits it in the drink chip. He doesn't shy away from it. But that's yeah. what he is in his essence as a producer. He goes out there, he sees what works, and then he puts it into something. And then I think his greatest genius is convincing people he's a genius when I don't think he's one at all. So musically, I'll give it to him. And we just talked about how comfortable the shoes were. So I mean, you know, I it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's something to designing some comfort. Is he making supplies. the foam? I don't know. He, he, he put it like this. He was smart enough to pick the technology. No, I, I think he's he has taste. Yeah. Right. Except, you know, with his belief systems. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. but in terms of like aesthetic, it's 100 percent. You can't deny that he has taste yeah. with music. Yeah. He has taste with clothing. Right. So other um, than that, he's a terrible human. And you know what bothers me the most about or sick, the stuff that he does. I, you, you, two things can be true because there's a lot of people out here who deal with mental illness that don't act like that. And by the way, is that going to be every bigot's excuse now? No. It, is that going to be white supremacist excuse I've heard this. Now? I've heard this argument. I've heard this argument. And what I will say is this, is that when you're mentally ill, you're more willing to go down uh, a rabbit hole without rejecting anything. And it's like, I, I come from a family that has a lot of mental illness. Like, my yeah. mom was manic depressive. I remember one, one, uh, one year she was having a manic episode and she tried to um, stop the deer from eating everybody's flowers by just... Uh, Cre she created this idea that we should just leave all of our garbage out on the street. And then she started putting up signs around the neighborhood. Let's just take our garbage. Don't put tops on the garbage. Leave it on the street. The deers will eat the garbage. And then they won't eat any of our flowers. And you couldn't tell her. That, that sounds like a brilliant idea. It, 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 right? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. But then you go, oh, wait a minute. Not all garbage is food. And deers are going to be taking fucking diapers and shit. And the whole neighborhood is going to smell horrible. And pelicans are going to come and pick oh, things. Yeah, ever, yeah, 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 and yeah. the whole neighborhood look hard. But when you're manic, you don't think of what's bad. You just go down a line. So what my estimation is, since Kanye has never had a unique, smart thought in his life, 
what I think is he's just listening to what other people say and going, ooh, that sounds yes. provoking. Megaphone. How are you a free thinker when all you're doing is repeating white supremacist talking points? Yes. And then repeating everything we've heard every black Israelite say mm-hmm. <laughs> since we've been alive. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I how got, yeah. how is this person the person y'all call a free thinker? I hate the fact that I know Kanye does not believe the things that he's saying. Yes. And you know how I know Kanye doesn't believe the things that he's saying? Because we all hear Kanye behind the scenes. And we've had conversations with Kanye behind the scenes. And he does not believe any of this stuff that he's saying. Kanye does the same play every single time. Pisses off black people in, mm-hmm. in, in, in his never-ending search for white validation. Yeah. In his never-ending search for white validation and wanting to be accepted by white people, he finds a way to shit on, shit on black people. Yep. He did that with the All Lives Matter shirt at yep. the Paris Fashion Show. So then he gets backlash from black people. So what does he do? Okay, let me say something super pro-black. I ride for my people. I'm Moses. I'm taking you out. All this stupid shit. You know what I'm saying? All of this dumb shit. So he gets online, says says the thing about Jewish people, you know, the whole DEF CON 3 thing, because he knows that's going to rile a certain group of people on Mm. social media up. Mm. And all of a sudden, just like that, they forget about, oh, he just shitted on black people last week. He was just super anti-black last week. Oh, now he's going anti-Semitic? Well, if I believe some of the things that he's saying... Now I'm a ride and, with and him. Think about how he went anti-Semitic. He went anti-Semitic through the guise of why do they own all of our shit? That is, why do they own? But 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 what's interesting about it is he's trying to get the people he's pushed away, black people, back yes. on his side by making another enemy. Now, do you know who's used this in the past? I don't know, Chris. Do you have any ideas? A couple of people in Germany. Yeah, Chris. I heard of them. <laughs> yeah, what's yeah, his name? I don't know. Yeah, I heard of them. The other N words. The one with the mustache? <laughs> the, the Nazis. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, just, it's you know, and I told y'all this three weeks ago. This guy, and I say it all the time, but whenever I say it, people say I'm a hater. He seeks white validation. He shits on black people in his never ending search for 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 white validation. Yeah. Then when black people get mad at him, he becomes super pro-black. Yeah. And he just repeats the process over and over and yeah. over again. He's going to shit on you again. By the way, he shitted on you in Drink Champs interview and he says things like, what do black people own? Just the word nigga and braids? It's like, yo, you you, you, sh- you shitting on our achievements. You shitting on yourself. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You're sitting there as a black owner yeah. saying that black people don't own anything. But you know, it is, I, I don't know. I don't know for a fact. My assumption that his frustration all of this seems like it's manifesting from like a lack of control. Man, right? this is coming from he don't have Kim no more. Well, I, I, I actually don't. He's think, projecting. Well, but that's a control issue too. This is all. It's all. He, he's going through pain. He's hurt. I, so he's projecting that pain and that hurt. Can I? Can this, I? That's can, all this is about. You might be right, but my my assumption is that Kanye sees himself as this great creator, right? And he battles between two things: one, wanting money. And in order for him to get money, he has to sell his freedom, right? Does he? With with he can't do what he wants at Adidas. That's his frustration. Do, what is he not I doing? I should be able to pick all these people. I should be able to pick who we give a shoe to. I should be able to do this, but he can't. Right? I, I he thought, can't I, even tell them not to make shoes that look like fake Yeezys. I thought he had his whole staff that he just fired. He just no, fired no. his whole Yeezy team. Yeezy, it's different. It's different. Yeezy is a clothing brand that he owns, but any sneaker that's Yeezy comes out mm-hmm. through Adidas and they own that. He gets a royalty on it. He gets a lot of money, but he, but he cr- just he gets creates a royalty. It, he helps create it. Sure, but they can also take the models and then make knockoff versions of it through Adidas and he can't do shit about it and he knows it and I think his frustration is every time he takes a deal because he wants the money, he doesn't want to put his own money up because when he did that, he lost like fucking $50 million yeah, with of the money. fashion shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now he's always like, just give me the money and then I'll make it. Even when he's talking about Arno, he's like, Arno is supposed to give me my stores. Arno is supposed to, why do you need a daddy why all does the, the time? Yeah, why does the white man always got to give you something? Why you need it? And then you frustrated. So wild, I get and then so you frustrated me. When, when somebody gives it to you and they have stipulations with the gift. Nobody going to give you all that money without rules. If you go back and you watch that old interview we did with Kanye on Breakfast Club when I'm coming at him, I'm literally saying to him, you're Kanye West. Mm-hmm. Why do you always got to beg these white people and these corporations for something? And he literally begs. Yep. But then he'll get on a platform now and call everybody else the slave. Nice. You know what I mean? He had that song called New Slaves. And he said, um, are you a leader or a follower? A dick or a swallower? Yeah, yeah. I think he's all the above. He's literally a, he's a black skinhead. I think he's, <laughs> he he's lived a up to it. Yes. He lived up to it. Yes. Right? But I think he's all <laughs> he the above. I think ago. Kanye is a leader. A follower, a dick, and a swallower. <laughs> I think he's all four of them at once. And yo, I'm not gonna lie, it is very silly 
for anybody. Every, by the way, everybody's using them right now. You know what yes. I mean? Because they know it's instant clicks. They know it's instant. That was wild corny of Cuomo, too. Especially after. No, it wasn't corny of Cuomo. Cuomo got a new network. He's on, he's oh, on, that's not CNN? No. no. What is Cuomo, it? News One or some shit like that. Cuomo just launched a new show. Cuomo did exactly oh. what he was supposed to do. Yeah, but it's it's weird because if you think somebody's actually suffering from mental illness, then you're taking advantage of them. Is it not? Is everybody not? Well, because of you. What do you mean? Because of me? <laughs> you made everybody mentally ill, bro. Hey, shut up. <laughs> Before that, they was just not. having a bad day. Now that all my anxiety is fucking causing. It's real though. Here. Everybody got language and they know what they're dealing with now. But Chris Cuomo did what he was supposed to do. I'm gonna use this guy. To bring interest to my show. That seems selfish. And that's I, it nice. is. But everything Kanye is doing is selfish, too, because Kanye is going on these platforms and using them. Everybody's using each other. Yeah. Everybody's using each other. Honestly, I, before the Drink Champs, I was like, OK, I get it. This might be interesting. After Drink Champs, I, I was like, oh, this guy's uh, off. And uh, yeah, I wouldn't put him on. What do you mean he's off? Yeah. He's been. What have y'all been watching? Like right now, all I'm seeing is a man that is moving like he don't have much time left. He's moving like he doesn't plan to be with us that much longer. That's yeah. what I see. And I've been seeing this for a while. How are y'all just seeing this after the Drink Champs interview? What What did he say in the Drink Champs interview that he hasn't said a million other places, which is why I told Nori last week. Jewish media. Not to do the interview. I think that's what he said. What? <laughs> he didn't say anything about the Jewish media. He been saying that that is a yo that's old rhetoric but from him yes i just said he, ice cube started the job and i'm gonna i'm gonna finish it he's talking what job what, what job? job you gonna finish bro? what job <laughs> that's crazy. like what is going on and then you got people piling in on the fight like yeah let's go i'm like where are y'all going yeah, yeah yeah what are y'all doing well i think there is something interesting about this and i i'd be actually great if chris you could speak on this a little bit because you were raised in it and a lot of people don't understand this. So it because Jews are like two percent of the population. Our just Jewish, throw me my my uh, my our jacket. Jewish representation. Now, I know about this. As soon as he walks in the frame, people say, "Oh, that's who controls everything." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus. Here, here, oh, yeah. So, like, okay. So I think a lot of things that are going on right now, right? There's a lot of people that are surprised at why what Kanye says is so offensive and so dangerous, right? And if you're asking a bunch of friends, if you have your Jewish friends, they're like, yo, this is one of the most vile things that's ever been said. I'm so fucking offended. I'm so angry, right? You ask some white or black friends, they, they go, man, that Black Lives Matter shirt was stupid. What a fucking idiot. And the George Floyd shit was dumb. And they don't understand the, how dangerous the Jewish rhetoric is. Now, because the Holocaust well, started because of rhetoric. Well, 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 well uh, it's, it's, a little, it's a little different. So within the Jewish community, you should speak to this, is there is like a paranoia about yes. this happening again. And it is baked into the culture. You're probably taught this from like a young age, right? Very true. And, you know, I think historically, when you look at the moments when Jews are in the most danger, and I'm, I'm speaking in the European Jewish tradition, right? right? It's when they're in countries where there's economic turmoil. Yes, recession is coming. A recession is coming. People, People are losing money and they start poverty. Yeah. looking around. Whose fault is this? And not to mention uh, hate crimes against Jewish people have risen over the past few they years. They have. They have. No? Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's, there's a long history of this going back hundreds of years in Europe. I mean, frankly, the example that he used with the Catholic divorce lawyers is something I've never heard in my yeah, life. Yeah, That's completely insane. Yeah. Like, that, that's that why was I, insulting because y'all were getting money before that. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> you know what I, mean? <laughs> I thought it was, you the, I thought call it was the bank. lawyer money? Was this was, lawyer I money? I thought it was the banking industry. <laughs> I mean, there's 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 many different industries. but they, I had the same reaction. I was like, do you think we needed Catholic lawyers to give <laughs> yeah. us divorce jobs? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We've been paid well, a long yeah. time before this. But, so the, his whole theory he was... He doesn't read, by the way. Well, no, of course, of course. So I, I somebody just, I want whispered you to, that in his ear. Okay, but right. I want you to go on, on... This is very important to understanding why there's such a fractured response to this. Jews are, are furious, and rightfully so, because they've been taught about how easy it is for an Inquisition or the Holocaust to happen, and this is the exact type of rhetoric. You've, you've been taught this since you're a kid. Yeah. Non-Jews don't get taught this. Right. We don't get taught this at all. And Jews often aren't sharing this with non-Jews. So non-Jews are looking at this thing, many non-Jews, and they're looking at the stereotypes that are deemed offensive for Jews as you guys control the media, you own the banks, you guys are all lawyers and doctors. 
And there's a lot of non-Jews that look at those stereotypes and they go, well, shit, I wish people thought my people were doctors and lawyers. Sounds I aspirational. Wish people thought, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I wish, like, I can imagine, I can imagine a black dude walking down the street and a white person sees him and gets nervous. And he goes, are these dudes really complaining about owning the banks? I really wish that when people saw me, that's what they, they saw, not somebody who was a threat. So I see the reaction from non-Jews going, these ain't bad. We got bad stereotypes. But, but, but that's when you got to have a conversation. Yeah. And when you have the yeah. conversation, it's a simple understanding. Like you understand now why those things are considered stereotypes. Yeah. That's what happened to me a few years ago when I said the same thing. I was like, yeah, I want us to have that kind of power because we can't even get the people who kill us fired. Mm -hmm. Right. And I didn't realize why that was offensive at the time until right. I sat down and had a conversation. And, and just Jewish to make people. it clear why it's why it's offensive them or or more scary i would imagine is once people start believing the rhetoric of they control now there's a now we have a they Did you let the jewish man talk i'm just trying to no, you got it i mean that's that, I, I don't want to it's better it. coming from him i know i understand but that's that. it's, it's very accurate what you're saying and you know I'll, I'll take it even a step further I, you know i was talking about sorry this. to speak over you now but i just want it to be very clear no no you from a from someone who isn't right. jewish but I think I understand because I have a lot of Jewish friends, so I can I can speak to the people who aren't Jewish and why they might be confused about why these things are offensive. Yeah, and to take it even further, I mean, I think I was talking to my wife about this last night. I have to remember, most people in America have never met a Jew. Yeah, yeah. Right? Like, I live story. in New York City. I grew up in Philadelphia. Jews were everywhere. Jews are under 2% of the population. I thought it was like 0.2% globally. I mean, it's Oh, yeah, right. globally. But, yeah. but yeah. In, in the world, I mean, did you ever meet a Jew growing up? Uh, that you were aware no. of? Right? Whereas you probably couldn't turn around without bumping into I didn't know that there were non-Jews. Right, exactly. I swear <laughs> to God. I, 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 no, 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 no. I asked my father. I asked my father when I was younger. I, I, I was like, why are we not Jewish? Right. And and he goes, well, yeah, actually, Andrew, you know, most people actually aren't Jewish. And I go, right. I don't think that's right. Because in my school, <laughs> in it's, yeah, it was yeah, me, yeah. Kwamina Pamford, and Alexis Perez. We were the three kids who were Jewish. Right. And it was just like, what what is going on? But for most people, they have never met a Jew. They only hear about Jews through either music, movies, stereotypes. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And it's just, you could look at it in a lot of ways, like with black people, where there's a lot of white people that do not have a black friend. They don't know black people. The only experience they have with black people is through media. media and right. what if they're only being portrayed in a few different ways in media? That's dangerous. Well, you know what's crazy about what you said? Being that I'm a person who reads, unlike Mr. West, well, he's my, read one book, right? Like, I have no idea. Mind Kampf? You don't think that he's <laughs> <laughs> went through that a few times? <laughs> but it's like, yo, my first introduction to uh, reading about Jewish people was the Holocaust. Yes. So I'm reading about this horrendous thing that happened to this large amount of people by this psychopath named Hitler who wanted to create a superior race. Yes. That's how I was introduced to it. Right. So, you know, all that, everything else came later. Yes. You know? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think even putting it all on Hitler gets dangerous because there's a long history of killing Jews, frankly, in Europe, mm -hmm. going way back before Hitler. And again, and I think this is what Kanye was trying to say with the don't, whole... Don't, don't even be Kanye's translator. Yeah, I will right. not let you be the Ye Whisperer. You will not <laughs> translate for Kanye. Well, outside of Kanye, there's... Basically, there's this... A theory that's floated around Europe for a thousand years about usury, which was the idea that the Jews were the ones lending money because Christians weren't allowed to lend money during the Middle Ages. Mm -hmm. Well, it was just... It wasn't or just the Middle Ages. They weren't allowed to charge interest. Charge interest. Yeah. And I think in Islam, it's the same to this day. Right. So Jews kind of by default became the lenders, which kind of gave rise to this idea that Jews were controlling various economies. Mm -hmm. And certainly there were powerful Jews. The Rothschild family is like one of the historically the most. That's real. That's mm -hmm. not a conspiracy. I mean, there are many conspiracies around, around the Rothschilds, them, but, but the they fact, did start a banking conglomerate in Europe. Absolutely. But throughout the centuries, like that's become, you know, there, there are two big Jewish stereotypes. One is Jews killed Christ, which you would think wouldn't mean much to people, but somehow it becomes serious and it's used as an excuse to attack Jews. And the other one is that Jews control various economies. So it is true, like when, especially like I said, in a time like this, when interest rates are going up and people are losing jobs and there's a lot of anxiety around money. This is not the time you want to start talking about Jews are running everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. people are looking for a boogeyman and Jews become. And if it's not 
And if it's not adults, because maybe adults know a little bit better how to behave, it's the young kids that are in middle school, yes. elementary school, and high school that are hearing this information. And all of a sudden, now there's one Jewish kid in the class, mm. right? And all of a sudden, that Jewish kid is the reason why your parents no longer have a job. You're, right? re you're remixing bigotry for a whole new generation. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And we don't need a LeBron James version of the Bible where Jesus, where <laughs> yeah, Jesus Christ, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Jesus yeah, yeah. Christ gets taken out yeah, yeah. by Jewish people. That's the last thing we need right now. Yeah, so, I mean, look, he's, he's getting pushed back. I mean, you know, part of me, though, is, you know, you should have dropped him when he was, you know, uh, cozying up with Trump. That's when I dropped him. You know, I think it would right. be corny for me to, to be critical of him now because I washed my hands of him a long time ago. But... Is it possible? Sorry, go, go. No, no, no. I was going to say some stuff, but I don't want to say No, it. no, say it. Go ahead. Well, I mean, you know, if you want to really talk about a lot of anti-Semitic rhetoric, Kanye wasn't the only one this week. You know, Trump what? said some very inflammatory stuff, too. You know, the, the Trump thing was interesting, too, because I didn't really what understand he what that was about. He basically said that uh, the J Jewish Americans aren't, aren't being good to Israel. Right. They don't respect Israel like that. Or they don't well, he's saying he's good to Israel. And because they don't respect him, it, there was a, somebody on Twitter. I, I, I can't give them credit because I forget the name, but basically said like it was kind of like a mafia approach. Like, hey, this is a nice religion you got here. It'd be a shame if somebody uh, messed it up. And yeah. the kind of the talk was like, I'm supporting Israel. You, you, should got, support you should support me because I'm supporting Israel. And if you don't support me, I can't promise what's going to happen after this. So that. In tandem with Kanye is kind of like, all right. It's got everybody on edge. And yeah. by the way, you know, when we talk about history, every single community has a form of PTSD in regards to history. You know what I mean? People wonder why police brutality is so triggering to black people because it goes back to the slave patrols in South Carolina, right. in Virginia. Like the original police forces were actual slave patrols that were sent out to go capture slaves, right? So it's just like, all of us have different levels of PTSD and we don't want history to repeat itself. And anything that triggers that inside of us makes everybody go off. And rightfully so. I think it's just important that we explain those things, right? Because once you understand the context for mm -hmm. going off, it seems way more digestible. Like, hopefully there are even people listening right now that are going, oh, now it makes way more sense why the Jews get so sensitive and triggered when you talk about them owning the banks because that's exactly what Hitler was saying before the Holocaust. Uh, yes. That's what, yes. you know, the Spanish were saying before the Inquisition. Yes. You know, you can look throughout history and you can see these same things being said. So once you know that, it goes from, oh, that's a compliment to, oh, that's terrifying. That's phase one. Right. It's, that it's that type of rhetoric that yeah. eventually led to things like the Holocaust. It was literally runaway inflation in Germany post World War One. Yeah, like, we have runaway was, inflation now. It was there's like, runaway inflation. Literally the exact same template. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's it's not. I mean, a, the inflation was a little crazier. Yeah, yeah but yeah. we're we're like 1934 Germany right now. Like we're in the same space. Yeah, you know, like, I, it, it, I, I, don't you know. Could, I you wouldn't could, compare. I I understand why you're comparing them. I wouldn't compare them because you know what was the League of Nations or whatever it was imposed like incredibly crippling economic sanctions on Germany after sure. World War One. Uh, deserved. Stop trying to take over the fucking world. Right. But that creates this out of control inflation. And then they need uh, some, to blame it on somebody. It can't be your fault for trying to fucking invade everybody. Right. Right. The socialist Jews. Mm. So it's, you know, it's it's real. That's why Bernie Sanders scared the shit out of people. Why? Because he's a socialist oh, and a Jew. Yeah. Which is also why I knew he was never going to get elected. Not mm. yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's interesting, man. And, you know, um, man, I was sitting back even thinking, because what you just said is very true about why all of these conversations are so fractured, right? Because some people don't understand why the things Kanye says are anti-Semitic. Mm -hmm. But then some people don't understand why the white lives matter phrase is offensive to black people. Right. Some people don't understand why, Literally. why Nori decided to pull... The, the interview because of what he said about, you know, George Floyd. Yep. Right. And it's so weird to me that people are upset with Nori because Nori decided that God forbid somebody apologized because they feel like they hurt somebody. I think, I think that like, God forbid yeah. you yeah. can't even apologize. If you put something out and you unintentionally hurt somebody, yeah. why wouldn't you apologize? Yeah. I think, I think the, the only issue I had with the interview, obviously the rhetoric, I have the issue, but, the issue I had the interview was more like, if you know that he's mentally ill, 
like kind of like feeding them drinks and weed. That to me felt a little wrong. I was like, what's I, going I, on I, right but, now? But, like, but here's the thing. <laughs> One thing we know about the good brother, Nori, DJ EFN, they're going to be who they are. So when you yeah. go sit down with them, you know what it is. You know what it is. It's drink champs. You're going to drink. You're going to smoke. They're going to laugh. They're going to be married. That's mm -hmm. why I told Nori last week, now is not the time to have Kanye. There are people that said no to the interview. We know people who said yes. no. We know people that Absolutely. didn't put it out. And the shop didn't put it out on HBO. Fox News uh, edited the anti-Semitic comments and somebody from Fox said, fuck that. We, right. <laughs> we leaked that whole thing. Oh, they leaked it? Yes. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yes. They, Fox is trying to find the leak now. But my thing is, this is the thing. He worked for the Golden State Warriors. <laughs> <laughs> Same person that leaked Draymond Jay. But it's like, you really think you're going to go to a news network Say some shit that yeah, clearly on. is offending people that work there. Yeah. And you think they're not going to leak oh, it? Oh, no. Nah, they, they, they running it. Please. Yes. But imagine being a broke Jew and everybody tells you how Jews run the banks and they run the world. And you're like, well, call me. You know that, what I mean? That's like, like after 9-11, I had a cab driver who's like, no, I'm telling you. They told all the Jews to get out the building. I was like, well, who fucking didn't call me? Yeah. <laughs> Why did I get the email? <laughs> that goes straight to voicemail. Like, where am I fucking? Like, I could have been up there. Nah, I, I do so. agree. We need more conversations, man, because there's a lot of misunderstandings happening, man. And the thing that bothers me the most, the person that's sparking this conversation doesn't even give a fuck about what he's talking about. No, not he at all. believes none of this. This is just to get people off. His ass. Kanye cares about Kanye. That's it. Yeah. And it don't even work. And, and he, he tells you this. Yeah. He goes, who's my favorite person in the world? Me. Yo, he says, <laughs> in, he says in the Drink Champs interview, I'm going to send you the clip, Taylor. He goes, if y'all didn't want me to wear the White Lives Matter shirt, y'all should have supported me when Kim kidnapped my kid. By the way, y'all already fucked with me so much. Y'all already black mirrored me. You already made everybody think I'm crazy. You already took my family away. You already separated all my friends. I don't got no celebrity friends because when I was on TV, on Instagram saying, I don't know where my child is and the Kardashians kidnapped my daughter in public and I didn't have the address of my child. None of these niggas that want to say something Travis now. Travis gave you the address though? Travis gave me the address. Right. But as far as Meek Mills, no. Puff Daddy, whoever, none of these niggas, all you fake hard niggas, fuck you. Wait, Come, wait, no, no, wait, hold on, hold on. Okay. All you fake hard niggas, fuck you. You know what I'm saying? I don't give a fuck because you can't shoot nobody anyway. And the reason why you got talks because you did a deal. You fucking fed. Fucking fed. Fucking fed. The Yo, fuck son. does that got to do with anything? Right. Son, th this idea, oh, dude, it's so funny. Like, he's such, he's a victim in everything. Can kidnap my kids. That's classic narcissism. Yeah, of, co of course, of course. Self pity, oh, victimization. I'm the victim. I called Dove Charney uh, to make the t shirts, and then he said he didn't want to make them when he heard the rhetoric. It's like, he's Jewish. Oh. No, no, no. Stop, stop, stop. Make your own fucking t-shirts. <laughs> Buy a, a factory. You're a billionaire. You're the richest black man in America. You can't get no, a no, print no, on a no, t-shirt. No, he, he is not the richest I'm black saying man. he's saying he is. Yes. Robert okay. Smith is the richest black man. Right. So, but I guess what I'm trying to say is like everything is... it cheaper is, or does he want the cosign? That's the question. Ah. I just think he doesn't want to do anything. I think he doesn't want to take responsibility for anything. I think he literally just wants to be like, hey, here's this thing. You guys go do it. You guys go figure it out. I'm not going to do the hard shit. And he's convinced people that that works. And it has. You've seen these businesses get huge success because of his ideas. Uh, it, it's Can we talk about some of those me. businesses? Pop the hood. What, yeah. Who are the black people that work for Kanye West? Ooh. Are you talking all of this black, this black, this, yeah, where, where's the, what's your team look like? I mean, wasn't... Look, look at my, go look at my, Black Ver Effect, fully black staff, right? Charlotte, that's... I'm just saying. Tell the truth, bro. It's, what? You got only Mexicans working at fucking black. <laughs> Dude, it's fucked up, bro. You go go into a black... I just thought it was Taylor a two short. Just because Taylor's short, you think she's a Mexican? She's part Mexican. <laughs> Taylor is part Mexican? But even even me, me and Kev's company, SBH Productions, ran by a black woman. You know what right, I mean? Right, Our right. creators are black. Like, all these people that's talking all of this black shit, black business, what is under your hood, bro? Let me see. Let yeah. me see. I can show my staff at my different places yep. of business. Come yep. to the TV show. 80% black and brown. Too not 90. much. <laughs> dude, it was a lot, dude. It was a lot. But it's, it but it's noticeable, lot. right? I know. As soon as you walk in, like, so what I, the no, hell? No. This is black your, show, color green. your show is black. Bro. Black and brown. Bro, yes. No, no, no. Bro, when we did, we did a prayer before it started, I was like, <laughs> right, yeah, baby. Yeah. I was like, I've never done this in a TV show before. My, my, my whole point is... A prayer? I don't want to hear all of this black talk about black this, <laughs> black that. We don't own this. Because you're in a position of ownership, yay. Yeah. What does your staff look like? 
<laughs> Put your fucking money where your mouth is. Like, mm. I, like I, I don't I would have assumed there were a lot of Jews on the staff, to be honest. I, I, could, I would guarantee it. Right? I would, I would 100% guarantee it. Why is that? I just feel like that's, you know, like he's in that world. He's in L.A. He's in New York. I think you're just going to bump up against a lot of Jews. Well, a lot of those people resigned this week, I'm sure. When people don't want your money no more, when they tell you that you got such and such date to get your money out the bank. Yeah, bro. It's pretty bad. Oh, we should also clarify that. They kicked him out a month ago. Yes. I did a little snooping You know on why? That. You know why? All right, all right go. What is he was talking shit about the CEO on social media. I don't know if it's only that. What else do you think it was? This is, I don't know for a fact. I think what it is is Kanye doesn't have a lot of cash compared to his, his like billions of Oh, wealth. no, he had $140 million in that bank. It, which is not a lot compared to being a billionaire. Right. So that's it's a like lot of money, uh, uh, liquid. Let me let me just get it out to us. That's a lot of money to somebody who is a billionaire. Having one hundred forty million in cash is not a lot of money. OK, so what for? Because in order to buy things, in order to have this extravagant uh, lifestyle, create these crazy things, you need liquid fucking cash. To do I shit. wonder. I wonder how many billionaires have so, that liquid. Though. So what they do is even the ones that don't, what they do is they take loans against their assets. Right. OK. Now, his assets is the equity in his company, which is not a very safe asset because if Kanye gets canceled, the company's worth nothing. It depends. Kanye is Yeezy. If Yeezy goes, I'm stepping down and uh, and this guy is going to go. I don't like what you're putting out there. What? Those slides are comfortable. So even if Kanye gets canceled, <laughs> no, That's if great. Kanye gets canceled and you see me in a different color wear Yeezys that Adidas does, yeah. I'm still buying. Let me, do, let me put it this way. Elon Musk goes, I'm stepping down from Tesla. What mm -hmm. happens to Tesla stock? Oh, I think it might go up. <laughs> right now. I think it might go up. <laughs> right no, right right we are invest, we're not investing in Tesla. We're investing in Elon. We're like, this is the smartest guy on the planet. He's going to figure things out. He's going to work it. I understand what you're saying. But if I could just get this point out, the point is what I think was happening is Kanye was uh, asking for loans against his money, which is how rich people operate. You don't pay taxes mm -hmm. on loans. It's a great way to get cash to be able to buy things. And I think that he was overextending himself with these loans. And JP Morgan was like, I don't really trust this motherfucker that much. He's a pain in the goddamn ass. And he's asking for more loans. And, and he really he's has talking shit about me on social media. Exa it was like it's a cornucopia of things. But they were like, it's just not worth it. Yeah. And they did what none of us can do which is leave fucking Kanye. Yeah, yeah. None of yeah, us yeah. can, but they actually did the thing. I can. We'll see. I can't leave those slides. That's the thing. <laughs> That's the thing. But Kanye, like, listen, and by the way, I'm not- That's a next level accomplishment to get a bank to not want to work with you. Banks are the worst institutions on the planet when it comes to like moral efficacy. E efficacy, is that a word? Or ethics. 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 Right? Like they, 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 they launder money for cartels. They have fucking terrorist money. They have rapist money, pedophiles money, Weinstein, Epstein. Everybody had bank accounts with these guys. The fact that they looked at Kanye and they're like, I can't be around this guy anymore. Yeah, that's, that is an accomplishment. By the way, this, and that's the other thing that's sad, I mean, right? <laughs> you're, 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 you're influencing a whole generation with your bullshit. Mm -hmm. And there's a whole generation who think that's the way to go about doing things. Yeah. But that, it's, it's not. That's why when you say who's behind, somebody's in his ear right now, right? So when you say that and you talk about his financial difficulties and losing money, I think it's the Russians are in his ear. I think. This, that, is, that, this is that Jewish paranoia, bro. You know, this is that Jewish paranoia. It goes too far. You know, See, you know since we, this, it goes too far. I guess it's I got a very hot take. It's not fully go, baked let's yet. Go. It's I'll conspiracy keep, theory I'll week. Let's it. go. It don't uh, matter. It's the pod. We pod. Go nuke. Go, Chris. Go. I think there are a lot of Russian assets in American media and culture right now. I think Elon Musk is one. I think Ooh. Trump is one. Ooh. I think Kanye is Ooh. one. Why would Elon Musk be an asset to Russia if he has Starlink open in Ukraine for free that he's losing money in so that oh. they can thwart the Russian attack? Well, why is he trying to broker peace deals between the Ukraine and Russia? Because we've seen this before. It's called Afghanistan. It's never going to stop. So it's so like he's just doing that out of the... I think he's being realistic. We all know what's going to happen here. Like that Ukraine does not have the military force to actually thwart a true all on, all in invasion from Russia. They're being supported by America right now. We're just giving them fucking billions of dollars of weapons, mind you, right. to like shoot down these drone strikes that Russia's doing. So he's like, how many Ukrainian and Russian lives need to die before we end up at the exact same solution? Because Ukraine's a fucking proxy between us and Russia. It's not even a... 
Well, how do we know there's even a war okay. going on, bro? Can you do this though? Oh, what? This guy. How do we even know there's a war going on? <laughs> yeah. How do we know that it's even happening, bro? That's true. That's a good point. How do we know the media is just not showing us images of things, bro? You're saying that Ukraine is a false flag? I have no idea. I'm just throwing shit out there, bro. I don't, I, right. like, I don't care. So, I don't, these I, aren't fully baked, like I said. And listen, and, and to your point, though, Kanye West's last presidential independent campaign was secretly run by GOP elites. Of course. That's a, that's a fact. I, I'm just saying, Someone's trying to sow seeds of chaos in America right now. Like I just I, think Kanye's a natural agent of chaos. I don't think that it's even that deep with him in regards to like, now those other people you named, possibly. I don't even think it's that deep with him. I just think he's an agent of chaos on purpose because his own life is in shambles. Right. But to be clear, America does this to other countries. I'm not inventing oh, yeah. something out of thin air. I mean, we have a long history. Oh, oh this yeah. is... Somebody we can compromise in Iran. This is someone we can compromise in Venezuela. We can put money into this. Per like, that's how this shit works. So yes, I don't think yeah. it's crazy to think it's happening here right now. I mean, <laughs> there's a reason why there's not a single country that is an enemy of us that is also that also has a democracy. Right. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Because if they did, we would influence it yeah, in our yeah, favor. Yeah, yeah. Right. right? Yeah. <laughs> like, like yeah. I'm sure there are countries that would like to have a democracy, yeah. but it wouldn't be true because we would find ways to instill our leadership. Right. We're going to get our guy in there. One that's why, that's why people, so we're, we're, America's going, there are these tyrants around the world because you don't give it any other option. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and that's why people like Kanye are so dangerous, because you have a whole bunch of people out here who don't have a democracy. They really don't have anything to believe in. You know what I mean? And so here this guy comes around with this crazy ass rhetoric and people buy into it and they don't even know what they're buying into. Yeah. Tell me what's the mission. If you had to look at everything he did this week, what is the mission? Yeah. I mean, to, to run get, in for this to be happening, for us to be talking about that's it. That's it. Nothing more, that's yeah. nothing less. There is no game plan to it. And, you know, but he achieved it. He right. what? He's achieving what he wants. We're yeah. spending everybody talking about. Yeah, right. but this is this what all of y'all going to learn. All of y'all. Yeah. And yeah. I've been saying this to y'all for some years. All attention is not good attention. And yeah. eventually you write it. You write it. You write a check that your ass can no longer cash. How you talking about? You can no longer get those loans and shit from the yeah. bank. After yeah. a while, that shit runs out. And right now he's at the point where that shit is absolutely positively running out. It happens to everybody. We were kind of saying it ran out when he was wearing a MAGA hat. And, and then it keeps somehow, on going. Somehow he brought that shit back. I will say this, though. Did, 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 at the time, there was an article that came out this week in the Los Angeles Times. It said, um, uh, it was, I think the headline was something like, is it, is it, uh, are you, is it okay to be in business with Kanye West? Uh, how much longer will people be in business with Kanye West? And they break down all the things. Like, he's no longer with Def Jam no more. The Gap situation, which was a billion dollar deal, like they they decided to part ways. Adidas has his deal under review. The bank is telling him he got to get his money out by November twenty first. Who the fuck wants those problems? That's it. That's it. As Kanye West business partners back away, rapper buys right wing social media platform. That's the difference. Mm -hmm. Kanye West business partners backing away. You can pop all that shit you want when you still got all of those businesses in play. Mm. That's where your money is coming from. That's where your strength is coming from. You really gonna listen to that motherfucker after he loses everything? And you don't you know, think there's other businesses looking at this like, oh, shit, they all parted with Kanye. I know if I attach myself to him, I can get a little buzz and then I'll yeah. part ways with him, too. Absolutely. Like, that's going to keep happening. That, that's not, no way. You know uh, why? Well, Come on. Why do you yeah. think Drink Champs got hit so hard this week? Tell well, me why you think. Well, because they let a guy go on and spew Nazi rhetoric for three hours. After, after somebody already said we're not putting this hate speech out. After a news organization edited out the comments uh, that they didn't like yeah, yeah. after we saw him all over Twitter saying this shit. So you knew what was going to happen. What business is going to going get down with Kanye after all of this shit? In America? In America. Not. But the question is, what's his value internationally? Mm. I don't know. Because yeah, I don't true. think people in China give a fuck about this right now. No. I don't think people in Europe maybe So fuck. maybe internationally he'll be able to do some things. I think what's happened with Kanye is like what happens with like OnlyFans girls that eventually go into porn. It's like you need to go crazier to get the attention. Right? Now you got to right. suck some dick. Exactly. Right. It's like you could start with titties. Oh, he starts oh, with titties. Then yeah. you show a little pussy. Caitlin and then all of a sudden. Though. Caitlin did that. Caitlin did that. He can't transition. <laughs> well, he's not going to transition. What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm talking about he needs to go more extreme to get the same attention. Oh, I thought you mean he needed to get some titties. <laughs> no, 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 no. He already got those, by the he way. Got he got those. He got the hips. Yeah. But uh, yeah. he's going to try to eat his own ass soon. 
Oh, yeah. Probably yeah. on OnlyFans <laughs> or whatever that new platform is. Parlor. 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 Yeah, yeah. He's going to try to eat his own ass on Paula. But that's exactly what happens. It's like you go a little <laughs> bit more extreme to get the same attention, and he's just having to push it. Like, MAGA got the certain amount of attention. Okay, now I have to go past MAGA to get this, and now you're doing the fucking Nazi rhetoric. It's like, what ne What next? What did, what did Taylor say? I have no idea what Taylor said. Y'all forgetting you still have a whole platform for music. No, no, no. Taylor just said something that I know nobody gives a fuck about. Taylor said he just he has a whole platform for music. That's what I've been saying all week. I'm like, when he loses all his businesses, what are he going to do, rap? <laughs> Don't nobody want to hear that shit? Yeah. Nobody want to hear Kanye West rapping? Like who wants to like seriously? The who kids do? Yeah. I, no, I, I, I don't know, bro. Yo, my, my daughters, that whole teenage, they love Kanye for some reason. Yeah. They love his uh, catalog. Yeah. She didn't, go, stuff she didn't go buy yeah. that stem player to hear Donda 2. Yeah. That was too much work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the kids gotta do yeah. too much work. They yeah. ain't yeah. I'm just saying, I'm shocked how much traction he seems to have with teenagers right now. Nah, it's the, it's the shoes. It's the whole is aesthetic. Is? Yeah, yeah, but like, but, but why do y'all... Here's the thing. This generation acts like things can't crash and burn, even though we watch things crash and burn all the time time we say this everything it, it's so fun when social media is going crazy and things are trending and everybody's like yeah 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 and Listen. then when somebody dies or something horrendous happens to them they're like oh man didn't see that coming yeah but look fair at enough trump. but i think i think a lot what of do you mean look at trump so everything looks like it's crashing and burning around him and he, people are still saying oh shit if he runs in 2024 he's gonna win man here's the reason it's because people who are either undeniably entertaining or undeniably brilliant creatives get a pass for as long as they're entertaining or brilliant at creating. I know it sounds fucked up. How many fucking rock stars have said incredibly hateful, offensive things and they're still touring? I think Axl Rose from Guns N' Roses said the fucking N-word, like blatantly, Slash, his guitarist is half black. They're back out on fucking tour together. It, they, but because they are one of the greatest rock bands in history, this happens over and over and, and over matters, again. I don't even know how you said the N-word, but we're acting like Trump's situation <laughs> isn't in shambles. How, how could he say it? Good. <laughs> he might have said it in, in the context of a rap song or in the context he of how no. hip-hop uses it. No, no, he said it like... By the way, because it's not... He he's threw not, immigrants in there, too. Yeah, oh, no, I didn't know that. Yeah, but he's yeah. not the first person to do that. Like, I mean, right. I'm done that. Like, it's, it's mad. It's mad no, 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 like, no, 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 no. With, a, with not the, the uh, positive context. He said it in the hate way. Yes. Well, I don't listen to fucking Axel Rose. So that's right. the thing. Axel Rose is going to always have an audience, just like Trump is going to have an audience. But do you want people raiding your motherfucking houses in Florida? Do you want do you want to be fucking under investigation every fucking way? Do you want to be getting a million subpoenas? Like, who wants to live like that? I know, but that's what I'm talking about. If <laughs> they're entertaining, people win. will watch. We want to entertain. Dude, yeah. this is the thing about Kanye. I don't care what you have to say about him. He said the most hateful, disgusting things in that interview. There are also times in that interview where I laughed out loud. Yesterday, when he fucking this was talking, no, I'm being honest. Yesterday, when he's talking to Chris Cuomo, and Chris Cuomo keeps trying to cut him off, and then Kanye goes, "Can I speak? Can I say la 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 la?" la. <laughs> but, <laughs> that shit but time was out, time genuinely out. hysterical. As y'all as y'all laugh. He's losing billions of dollars. Yeah, I. I, I as know, as we, what, what does that have to do with what I said? What so, so, so that, my point, my point, may, maybe not with the consumer, the audience, with the people that's doing this. At what point do you say, "Why am I fucking up my life for these folks?" Yeah, they should. What I'm trying <laughs> to say is, there's a reason why brilliant creatives and brilliant entertainers can continue entertaining despite saying cancelable things. Yeah, is because those are unique qualities that we on some primal level desire. So as fucked up as maybe things Trump has said, every time he speaks and you see it pop up on Instagram, you're like, oh, what does motherfucker say now? Yeah, but you that, will watch but it. That don't mean the house not on fire. No, no, it, yeah. it, that don't mean the plane's I, not I, going I, down. I, let me clarify. I'm not saying that the plane's going down. Uh, not going down. I'm not saying that the mm -hmm. house is not on fire. That could also be true. But what is also true is when they speak and as long as they are entertaining People will listen. We have an unlimited appetite for but that. That is so yeah. that, sad. That, thank you, you know for saying so that. It's our fault. Because we can't. It is us. Because, us. because we could stop listening. We could stop talking about We could completely ignore him and he would go away. But because he has the ability to entertain through either making us hate him or making us laugh or making us listen to music, because he does have that unique ability, we will keep indulging. Yeah. And guess what? He will keep being dysfunctional. And eventually that dysfunction is going to cause him to be in a situation that he cannot return from. Whether it's hurting himself, 
whether it's death, any it's so it's so many things that can happen while we're sitting back laughing. Bro. And that's the that's the crazy part about Bro. the society that we live in. We will laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh until it's over, and then everybody's like, "Oh shit!" Man. I don't I don't think that they're I I don't want to necessarily compare the two, um, but I mean, there's been incredibly offensive things said by my goat, Doctor Umar Johnson. Okay, incredibly offensive rhetoric has been spewed by Dr. Umar Johnson, who's my goat. He's <laughs> so entertaining. My goat is so entertaining that to me, I just push it aside and I just indulge in the hilarity of this human being. But Dr. Umar also absolutely positively believes the things that he's saying. He's not doing this. That's to not troll. good. That's not good. That's I, bad. I, listen, sure, but he's not <laughs> trolling. I would rather you go down. I would rather you get whatever you get based off what you truly believe. If you're trolling, and you're just doing shit and you don't even understand the consequences of your actions. You don't even, I don't think Kanye understands the ramifications of the shit that he's doing right now. Yeah. But I believe he truly believes what he's saying in that moment when he's I, saying it. I know he doesn't. No, I think in the moment when he's saying it, he I, believes I, it. And I then know, somebody tells I, him something right yo, after. Alex, and then, I know he doesn't. Uh, all right. Well, you I'm talking, <laughs> I'm talking, I'm talking about the person that'll look at the camera and turn to you and wink uh, and then look back at the camera. What are y'all talking about? Oh, well, then it's like, more dangerous. Yo, this, man, the guy got on. That's, guy, that's this, even that's yeah. even worse. The yeah, guy man. got on. The guy got on drink champs and said, <laughs> "This is hilarious to me." We can put this clip in too. He said, "Charlamagne gets on the radio and talks about <laughs> Kim wants to be with Pete." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. Pete's dick is bigger than <laughs> yeah. mine. Yeah, but you know, Charlemagne. How you knew I was going to talk about Charlemagne? How you knew that? <laughs> that's in my notes. Uh, yo, yo, he just. You know, he going to go on air and be like, oh, man, I'm going to paraphrase it. Uh, Kim is with Pete because he got a bigger dick. Why are you talking about another man dick on camera? Nothing you got ready? to deal with. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's just like a bunch of these industry plant niggas. It's just like mm. Samuel Jackson and Django. Not Samuel Jackson in real life. I fuck with Samuel Jackson in real life. I'm just talking right. about the character yeah. in, Django. Right. in Django. It's like, man... Y'all are not helping. Why? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why would he get on the radio and say that shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what Kanye Why said. would you be talking about another, another man's, man's dick? dick. <laughs> now, you heard me tell you this story last year, right? Yeah, which one? Uh, let me refresh your memory. <laughs> told y'all this. I told my, my, my people know this. When me and Kanye got into an argument, he called me uh, last November. It was Taylor. No, everybody, I told this because it's, it's hilarious. I didn't want him to have my new number. Mm-hmm. He's got uh, people calling me to get my new number, whatever, whatever. I'm sitting outside the passport office getting the passport for my daughter. We could be about to go out the country after Thanksgiving. I'm like, all right, fuck it. He calls me. He's basically trying to get me on board to shit on somebody he knows is my friend, Pete Davidson. Mm. Like, you got it. You're not calling me just to call me. You know Pete is my friend, right? right? Nori told like, Nori's like, you know, that's Charlamagne's guy. So you're calling me. He's like, oh, you know, um, oh, you know, you, we got to save the new Marilyn Monroe. You know what happened to Marilyn Monroe, right? Marilyn Monroe died of drug addiction. So we got to save the new Marilyn Monroe. I'm talking about Kim. Mm. And I'm like, yo, you know, Pete is my friend, right? So he's going on and on. And then he, finally he goes, my wife is out here fucking a white boy with a 10 inch penis and you won't help me. <laughs> my wife is out here fucking a white boy with a 10 inch penis and you telling me that's your friend, but you're supposed to be culture. <laughs> He's screaming on the phone. Somebody help. <laughs> Entertaining. Yeah. Entertaining. That's Hilarious. That's what am I supposed to do but laugh at that? It, that I'm going to walk out the goddamn room. So I want you to <laughs> <laughs> I'm walk out the goddamn but, room. You just proved my point and, that you argue and, and, with me and, about. And, and by the way, I don't know if it was, I don't know if this was last year. but I you, feel like Kanye right now. Wait a minute. I, I feel like Kanye. I don't know if this was last year when I did this donkey of the day or earlier this year. But I say to him, and, and I say to him, don't don't make me tell everybody why you really mad. <laughs> I said that. And there was articles and people was kind of knew what I was referencing. Yeah, yeah. But the reason I keep bringing up Pete's penis on the radio is because I know it fucks with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Okay>? <laughs> All right. And you said that to me. Yeah. But he gets on the interview and acts like he don't know where that came from. The yeah. motherfucker is a master manipulator. Mm. Yeah. I mean, he's the he's the best in the audience don't know that. Nope. Because they don't have no interactions with him other than what they see on social mm. media. Yeah. They just, it's it's fascinating his like control of people. I never got it. I, I, I've i always said you can look at every single podcast that we've done. We're talking about Kanye. I've, I've always thought that his lyrics were corny. 
I think he's a corny guy. I think the only authentic. No, you're going too far. Nah, no, I'm being honest. Bro, the only bro. authentic time I feel from Kanye is when he's complaining about women. I think he does have. <laughs> so, yeah, you capping right now. Go back. That's how. Go we, back. That's how we was in the green room and we played you his whole Hit. discography and you were going crazy. No, 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 like, no, no. What did I specifically like about it? The production. Thank you. I remember. I've that. never said that his production wasn't amazing. And I think that even in the interview, you can see like moments of him like being musical. And it's yeah. like he has music in him. Some people have it. Some people have design in him. Some people have comedy in him. But he has music in him. It, Absolutely. It, it, there's no question that whatsoever. And he has comedy in him. He he is funny. I I he is genuinely capable of make eliciting laughter mm -hmm. on purpose. His best lines are punchlines. He's fucking he has punchlines. Yeah. You cannot these are these things. He's he funny off, even when he's mad. Yo, it could be when funny. When a man yells at you, my my wife is out here fucking a white boy with a ten inch penis, penis, and you won't help me. I'm like, <laughs> what does what does that even mean? What Somebody help! Somebody help! Like, like, if she can't handle the ten inch dick, I know I can't. <laughs> like, what does that mean? What does that even mean? You know what I mean? All I'm trying to say is like his fucking every time he's like in a, like a preachy song, he sounds just like he sounded in the interview. It's like you don't even know these things. You have no control. Of what you you're just trying to be the woke guy or trying to be whatever guy. He's authentic when he's talking about his struggles with women, bro. That's when that shit feels pure and real. I'm like, oh, this guy's <laughs> rapping now. Everything else is like, oh, what do we have to do for our people? It's like, shut up. You don't care. You care about you, bro. All right, guys, we're going to take a break for a second because uh, I got to make sure y'all businesses are legitimate and you can legitimize them by having a space on the internet for them. A business without a website is not really a business. Let's be honest, folks. And Squarespace has got your back, okay? You need anything on the internet Squarespace has got you, okay? Today's episode is brought to you by them. They're the all-in-one platform for building your brand and growing your business online. Stand out with beautiful websites, engage your audience, and sell anything, your products, content you create, or even your time, okay? Squarespace makes it easy for creators to monetize their content and expertise in a way that fits their brand. With member areas, you can unlock a revenue stream for your business and free up time in your schedule by selling access to gated content like videos, online courses or newsletters create pro level videos effortlessly squarespace video studio app helps you make and share engaging videos to tell your story grow your audience and drive sales stand out in any inbox with squarespace email campaigns collect email subscribers and convert them into loyal customers start with an email template and customize it by applying your brand ingredients like site colors and logo built-in analytics measure the impact of every send use those analytics and insights to grow your business learn where your site visits and sales are coming from and analyze which channels are most effective improve your website and build a marketing strategy based on your top keywords and most popular products and content so head to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial and when you're ready to launch use the offer code idiot to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash idiot with the offer code idiot for 10% off your first purchase. Now let's get back to the show. What do y'all, what do we think about the price of free speech? Because we're seeing right now that free speech is not free. You know what I mean? Cardi B won her lawsuit. Alex Jones is in the hole for a billion dollars. Yep. Can, can you imagine that every dollar you have for the rest of your life no longer belongs to you? Yeah. Can you imagine what that would probably yeah. feel like for the rest of your life? Every dollar that you get yeah. is not even really yours. Yeah. Jesus Christ. So yeah. I even, you know, uh, even with, you know, and that's why I think what Nori did was so honorable because nobody asked Nori to take that interview down. Nori took a step back, saw how much he traumatized the family of George Floyd mm -hmm. and probably, you know, thought about, damn, not only did I hurt the family but yo this is this is liable we just saw alex jones get hit the same goddamn way yep. you know so i wouldn't be surprised if the family of george floyd you know uh filed a lawsuit against kanye but what do we think about free speech what is that because <sighs> i read a good quote today okay go this is a, it's a quote from a there's an article i read about somebody writing about Free speech. And the person said, uh, uh, the, 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 they said, when a person calls for bigoted violence or spreads mis misinformation that is damaging to the public, it is justified to censor them. I mean, that's, that? I mean, I think that that's built into the rules of free speech. You can't yell uh, fire in a crowded theater, right? Mm -hmm. Because if especially there's no fire, because people could be storming out and get hurt and people can end up dying. Mm -hmm. So there's 
uh, there's risk to people. So if the things you're saying are at risk to people. Now, everybody's going to be offended by something. I'm a you know free speech guy. There's no question, it, especially with the type of comedy I do. I want to be able to say things within the context of jokes. I think it's you get into a tricky situation when you have guys like Kanye who are just like regurgitating shit they don't even understand or believe. Yes. It's like they're taking advantage of free speech. And those people are going to be the people who actually destroy it. Like the people who are like research nuanced and thoughtful about the things they say, and they might be fucked up. They might be hard to digest, but they are researched and thoughtful. I don't think that we, uh, I don't think that we give that much pushback on them. We might disagree with them and the things that they say might frustrate us, but at least we know that they've put some time into this. That's it. Kanye is going to be the reason why free speech doesn't exist. And he the people doesn't like read. Him. He he's not he educated. He's he has no understanding of anything that he's saying. Yeah. And this is all because he wants white validation and he seeks white validation. And That's no it. matter how much he looks in the mirror, you will never see a white man staring back at you. It's a slippery slope because yeah. the problem is when you do deplatform someone like Kanye, that then feeds into the narrative coming from the other side. Which yeah. is this guy's trying to tell the truth and people are shutting him down, which is why, like, as much as I hate Trump and disagree with everything he says, I don't think he should be kicked off Twitter. Right. I don't think you should deplatform any of these guys because it's a very slippery slope. Yeah. But what think, if what if what if deplatforming them is because of what this quote says when a person calls for bigoted violence or spreads misinformation that is damaging to the public? That's what that's what a guy like Trump was doing. We, Violence we gotta, separates things, man. Yeah, I think once you, yeah man. Yeah. We got to teach people to analyze information. That's really the key. People are just accepting everything that's coming down their feed and they're not looking at it with that sort of nuance. They're not looking at it with research. They're not, so, so what so, Schultz said is what I yeah. always have. That's what I believe. Like, if you believe what you're saying and you have an understanding of it right. and it's coming from an educated perspective, we can debate. Right. That's when we can agree to disagree and have real conversations. But that's why I think you can't kick people off these platforms what because they, there's no debate then. But what if they're just saying wild shit for the sake of saying okay. wild shit, which everybody on social media so, is? So here's true, something true. interesting. It's like the platforms, uh, we don't have any rules yet for the platforms. The platforms seem to never be held responsible, oh, right? Man, yes. Whereas TV shows are held responsible. Radio shows are held that's responsible. Right. You say something fucked up, somebody can sue you. Nobody's suing Facebook. Nobody's suing Meta. Nobody's suing Instagram. Nobody's suing yet. TikTok. Yeah. Yet, yet. But when that does happen and somebody wins one of those cases, all of a sudden the rules are going to come cracking down real quick because now they'll feel liability for the things you say. Right now they're just sitting there chilling. But once that hits their pockets and it looks like something other people can do, then they're going to have some real strict That's right. rules. That's why I've been saying, yo, you got to regulate social media. There has to be some, I mean, it's, the, any, no, I don't, any, I don't personally want that because I don't think to. I take advantage of it. You don't, but I'm going to tell you why you have to, because if you don't, there's going to be so many people who end up in these Alex Jones type situations. Like I'm right. watching it now. So many of these YouTubers getting sued and yeah. shit. Yeah. They don't have the money for these lawyers. So when they go to court, it's they're bad. on there, they're on there like, well, I heard such a, oh, you heard this is a court of law. Yeah. But now, but isn't minutes, that a good thing that forces people to do their real homework? Yeah. No. No. Yeah. no the only reason I say no is because it's going to be a whole generation that gets fucked up. And some people m should be able to learn from them. But you, we, you know as well as I do, rules aren't just the control. Sometimes rules are to keep people from to protect. hurting themselves. Yeah, to protect. <laughs> like, like, yeah, but that's all. That's the. Mm -hmm. I, I would much rather them. Ha like, the reason I love that. That's an age old question. It's like, do you know how I should protect myself better than me? Well, and then if you decide that now the state is dictating what I could do and you've limited my. Food you're right. But guess what? Sometimes people don't know and they end up with 20 million dollar lawsuits that they lose. Yeah. And now they wages are getting garnered yeah, for Charlotte, the rest of their life. Think, you don't think they know what they're doing? Like, I think when you have like those shock jocks and people like that, they know they're trying to push the envelope. They know they're taking that risk. So I think all, Absolutely, but all the shit should be on them. It shouldn't be on the platform that's hosting it. Nah, the platform got to have some. And, and by the way, it's going to get to that. It's going to it's gonna be something that happens on YouTube or social media where they're going to be like, nah, y'all are responsible for this. It already happened on YouTube. It did? Yeah. So there was like the what called adpocalypse or whatever. And they were putting fucking like Charmin ads on like ISIS beheading videos. And then all of a sudden the, the toilet paper companies were like, yo, what the fuck are you doing? Why are you putting our, <laughs> like this on like the beheading video? And then because basically what they were doing, it was just. They were throwing ads on videos that they thought people could use. And to be fair, like a beheading needs, you know, cleaning up or whatever. So <laughs> I could see how like paper towels <laughs> might be useful in that situation. Logical. Logical. But but the That's point I'm trying to say is that once the ad companies said, you know, we don't want to do this and start to pull, YouTube created age restriction. They created 
uh, content restriction. Yes. And there are all these different things that your video has to meet in order to have advertisers on it. That will happen to Instagram and Twitter once there's advertisers, but there's barely advertisers on Instagram and Twitter. So there's no way of affecting them in that way. So it's tricky. I thought they, I thought Instagram and Twitter had advertisements. Barely, though. But not like YouTube where every video is getting right. clipped with it's, a few it's ads. It's not on somebody's video. It's like in between while you're scrolling. Exactly. So is you it, can't hold them yeah. accountable for the video. It's just weird that we watch airplanes about to crash. Like we know it's a nuclear bomb in this airplane. And when it crashes, it's going to level all of us. That's where we're headed with all of this shit. Mm -hmm. If there's not some regulations, like there's a reason they put regulations on the news. There's a reason they put regulations on these cable news networks. Any place somebody is broadcasting, radio, YouTube, anywhere, there should be some rules and regulations. And, and by the way, for so long, people thought they weren't. That's why to Alex's point, they were getting on here saying all types of wild shit. Mm. And all it takes is one person to be like, no, 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 no. We're going to court. Now what? Now you now you in the that's, whole millions of dollars. That's why in a weird way, I think court does decide it because a few of those big uh, cases happen and all of a sudden all these other creators are like, shit, we got to be on our P's and Q's. We, are they do. though? I don't know. I hope they are. I really do. I'm not even joking. I really hope they are. People are starting I, to censor themselves. Like you see You should because you're cruising for a fucking bruising. That's why I love... You're a stand-up comic. Yes. One of the best in the business today. You know why? Because you actually came up on that stage. Yep. Now, I'm not saying that internet comics aren't good because there are a lot of them that are good, but it's a difference coming up on that stage yes. and coming up online. Yeah. I'm a radio personality. I love the fact that I've had to have FCC rules and regulations, just like a Rush Limbaugh had or a Howard Stern had, because it teaches you how to play. Mm -hmm. You know what you can and you can't get away with. At least I know the rules. Mm -hmm. So if I overstep them, I know the risk. Right. You know what I mean? I know what comes with that. Howard knew what came with that when he stepped over a certain line. Rush Limbaugh, God bless it, that he knew what came with that if he stepped over a certain line. These people on YouTube and shit, they don't. And by the time they find out, it's too fucking late. <laughs> now there are millions of dollars in the yeah. hole. And, and now they're fucking no, wages are being garnished. Point. Yeah, the, the algorithm kind of pushes you into people who already agree with you. So you don't have to... You don't have to entertain the people who disagree. And, and I think that was one. I think that's more of a danger than hearing what Kanye says on a certain platform. I think the idea that we're all going to be in these silos yes. that only reflect our own beliefs, the echo chamber, whatever you want to call it. Because you can get away with more and you can get away yeah. with more extreme beliefs. It's like what we saw with QAnon. And then to your point, like about comedy, it's like I, I started in comedy clubs where people didn't even know who the fuck I was. Yeah. So I had to be able to entertain strangers that have different beliefs and then get them on my same page. And you're getting that instant feedback. And the instant feedback. I'm like, right. oh, okay, that joke made people feel uncomfortable or that right. punchline doesn't work right there. I, how do I make this palatable enough for even That's the right. people who disagree with me? That's right. And I'm sure you felt that with radio as well. It's like everybody turns on that fucking dial, all of a sudden it's going to have to listen to you. That's right. Ooh, okay, this is, this is women are not liking this or, or guys in over 30 are not liking yeah. this, et cetera. Yeah, that's a good oh, point. When you meet people out and about, you meet people out and about, you'd be like, oh, I didn't know I wouldn't even think this is somebody that listens to the show. You know what yeah. I mean? Like all, or you got a general manager who's coming in after the shift and saying that was a little too far. Was, yes, but checks and balances. Right, that's what somebody's missing. helping you right. regulate your shit. What scares me about this new generation is nobody's helping them regulate their shit, and by the time they figure it out, it's too yeah. fucking late. I don't want that for them. Yeah, personally. And we got to stop saying speech is free because it's fucking not. I've been saying it for years. There is a price to everything that comes out of your mouth. Sometimes it might be money. Sometimes it might be a punch in the face. It's never jail. And I think that's what the thing that about free of speech is. is like, it doesn't mean that it might not cost you something, but it's not going to put you behind bars unless you're like actually hurting people. And I think that's the idea with freedom of speech is you should be able to say what you want to say you might uh, hurt someone's business and they sue you for the amount of money that you cost them. You got to deal with it. And you have to deal with that. You deal but with it. you're not going to lose your freedom for the thing that you say, which I believe is the idea behind it. Especially when it comes to politics, right? That's, that's where these countries get into trouble. You go against whoever's in control. They drum up some sort of charge. Yeah. Now yes. you're locked up. Yes. That's what we can never get to. Yes. That's the agreed. Danger. Agreed. Agreed. You look back at everything that somebody said, a candidate that's going up against you, and they go, oh, you see, he said this one thing that's against the rules. Lock yeah. him up. Now he can't run. That's right. a great point. 
Well, that's going to happen in the future because what's going to happen is... And it's not America. It, no, yeah. It's going to happen in America. If they don't regulate social media, what's going to happen is somebody's going to get in power and they're going to regulate it to fit them. Right. Meaning like if I'm mm. one of these far right conspiracy theorists... Mm. Imagine Marjorie Taylor Greene in a position of power and she says, let's regulate it, but we're going to regulate it for us. So anybody who says anything negative about us or anything against us, off with their fucking head. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. So and now that's you, why I'm like, you can't kick Trump off of here, man, because the sword swings both ways. Just man. because he's saying something that I don't like, I want him gone. What happens when the pendulum swings the other way? Yep. They're going to kick all us off. So how do you, how do you, I guess, you got to do what dangerous. we're doing right now. Kanye says some crazy shit. We break it down, explain why it's crazy, explain why it doesn't make sense. And you got to just keep doing that and keep doing that and keep doing that. And it's tiresome. That don't mean he can't get his jaw tapped, though. Fair. And like businesses can Fair. walk away and people can stop Fair. supporting them. Like that's the, even when we, what you're saying is absolutely true, Chris. But even when we talk about the price of speech, that comes with it, too. You're going to turn people off. You might fucking say something and think that shit ripped and you got. A hundred people over here cheering you on, but ten thousand might have been offended and say, "I'm never listening to this motherfucker ever again. I'm Facts. never buying his products ever hey, again." My kids Facts. wanted Yeezys years ago. No, we're and not I, supporting that. I think the good thing that uh, the social media platforms are doing when they have the disclaimer, like, "Oh, this hasn't been fact checked" or something like that. I think that's a good step in the right direction because it's like, "Hey, we're not going to limit your free speech, but." we see something wrong with this and we're going to give you a little disclaimer before you actually watch it. So well, now it's like is, you look at it with like critical eyes instead of just like taking it for face value. You're right. I just never went to fucking social media for facts. Right. So, yeah, but <laughs> this is a different generation. Yeah. They're using it TikTok is, as Google right now. They're using TikTok as fucking Google, It's true. Bro. No, he's right. God, 100%. Man. I mean, they were doing that with YouTube as well. If you really want to think about it, YouTube is the second biggest search engine in the world. Google's the number one. YouTube is second. YouTube, any of us, even our your kids can upload a video giving their opinion on Kanye. Like, sure. And people are going to that potentially for information and judging by the amount of views, validating how accurate it is. It's kind of wild. Yeah. Like if I see a video that got 3 million views and it's a workout video, I'm like, this must be a good workout. Yep. People right. like this. If I see a video got 3 million views and it's like, why is Kanye right? Maybe he's right. You know what I mean? That's, that's, yeah. that's the danger, I guess you could no, say. Yeah, that- so maybe there is a responsibility, like Al said, putting that up you're like this hasn't been bare minute this hasn't been verified yeah. there well then the question becomes who's doing the verification and, okay so that's the dangerous thing right because now you're giving the power of truth to social media companies who decides what truth is the government has decided what truth is throughout our life that's true and that's not necessarily a good nah, that's thing true. That's the true. gulf of tonkin gets us into vietnam well based on that's true. truth that's that some true. shit never happened I guess that's true. dangerous, bro. And furthermore, it's dangerous when we don't even own the social media company. Mm. If China owns that shit, all of a sudden truth TikTok. gets very Chinese. Yeah. That's TikTok. Yeah, I guess that's that's also too what I mean. I mean, I guess the courts play a part in that too. And that's why I like why what Alex Jones did is super dangerous. Yep. Because rega- like there, there's, 100%. There, re- regardless of what you believe, if in a court of law, mm-hmm. it's been proven that this is true. Yep. Fuck you. Yep. You can't you can't jump out there and say it's not. You know Absolutely. what I mean? And that's what's gonna happen with Kanye. I guarantee you there's going to be a lawsuit from the Floyd family. And the precedent was set because of things like Alex Jones. Well, Pete Davidson too. To me, he got slammed. I mean, they he called him a heroin addict. Mm. Yeah. I'm like, you're, that's gonna fuck you up trying to get movie work. No, yeah. that's actually a great point. Yeah. Like, very liable. Very if, liable. Yeah, if you're calling someone a heroin addict, a movie studio they might think that's you. too much of a liability to you. put right. you on. Very liable. And that, that is interesting. And, that, and that's the other thing people don't understand about the Nori Drink Champs thing. It's like Nori did the right thing by taking the video down because he didn't want to hurt the family of George Floyd. But also, there were so many things said in that video that are liable. I get, I'm telling you, when the lawsuit comes, it, it, it's, it's going to come. You're going to hear Kanye getting sued. You're probably going to hear Candace Owens getting sued. They might name you know, drink champs and revolt in the lawsuit. I hope not. You know what I mean? But I, I can see all of that happening. Mm. And you know why? Because of the precedent that was set mm. by the Alex Joneses of the world. Yep. By Cardi B's lawsuit. Like, all mm. of that stuff set a precedent. And now people are going to be like, oh, you're just going to be out here lying? Because that's not an opinion. That's true. Like, what Kanye said about George Floyd dying of fentanyl and the officer didn't even have his knee in his neck like that. Yeah. What mm. the fuck, bro? That's true. It's, that's not even opinion. That's not something you believe. That's something we all saw, yeah. witnessed. They went to court for that. That was the 
Def- that was the defense's uh, defense. Man, I got a good joke about that. No, nope, you don't hand. ever. But please. I'll tell you also it's that right. I don't nah, want to hear it. it. You do want to hear it. Don't want to hear it. You want to hear this I one. do not want to hear it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not worth it. Uh, let's pay some bills. Um, talk space. When it comes to therapy and psychiatry, oh, this is a great segue because this is what I really want Kanye yeah. to do. Go get some goddamn help. All right. When it comes to therapy and psychiatry, getting the help you need has never been so simple. When you're able to access your provider from the comfort of your device, it means mental health care can be on your schedule and alleviating the wait times to get an appointment or the travel time to an office can free up time for the rest of your life. Talkspace is so convenient and accessible. It helps me feel supported around the clock, man. Talkspace lets you send messages to your dedicated therapist in the Talkspace platform, which allows you to update them on the challenges and triumphs you're facing in real time. So you don't have to wait for your next session. With Talkspace, you set goals with your therapist and they hold you accountable and make sure you're really progressing. Therapy can help you shift your perspective, find tools to cope in difficult times and be a guiding light. Talkspace has thousands of licensed therapists with years of experience and over 40 specialties, including depression, anxiety, substance abuse, trauma, anger management, relationship issues, food and eating, and so much more. Talkspace is secure and private using the latest end-to-end bank-grade encryption technology to store client information and complying with the latest HIPAA regulations. As a listener of this podcast, you'll get $100 off of your first month with Talkspace when you go to Talkspace.com slash idiots. To match with a licensed therapist today, go to Talkspace.com slash idiots to get $100 off of your first month and show your support for the show. That's Talkspace.com slash idiots. And today's episode is brought to you by Blue Chew. The nights are getting longer, but the breeze isn't the only thing that's getting stiff. That's right. This episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. Guys, we all know that confidence can take you far in life. That's especially true in the bedroom, especially when it's time to step up to the plate. That's where Blue Chew comes in. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. You can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever an opportunity arises. The process is simple. Sign up at BlueChew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. The best part, it's all done online. So no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA and prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package, okay? So if you want a little... Spice in your life, man. Go to Blue Chew, man. If you could benefit from extra confidence when it's time to perform, chew it and do it. Have better sex. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code IDIOTS at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's BlueChew.com, promo code IDIOTS to receive your first month free. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast. Let's get back to the show. Let's do some church announcements. Hezzy, what you got? Um, you know, um, uh, what do we got? What do we got? Oh, uh, oh, it's uh, special on YouTube, man. Thank you guys so much. It's over 7 million views already. So wow. that's been unbelievable. Thank you guys so much wow. for the fucking support wow. and watching it and sharing it. And, uh, yeah, it's just been amazing, man. Thank you so much. You know, this is, uh, yeah. Now back to work, baby. Now back to work. Back to fucking work. You now got a whole, work, uh, bro. set to do. That that it that is true, man. That's the people don't know how hard it is to um, complain when you're rich. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, you know, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, nobody wants to hear about just, your first world exactly, problem. Exactly, comedy's just complaining and being funny. So it's like, but you don't want to hear what I gotta say <laughs> about rich shit. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> you know, you know what I'm like, is it really that big a deal? That's why it's good yeah. to have friends that you know can relate. Yeah, you know what I mean, y'all can call and vent to each other. You think the Rat Pack was fucking just together because it was a bunch of rich people that were nah. famous? That was a support group, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? The fuck? Um, uh, my church announcements are simple. Uh, summer '85. That's the latest uh, Audible original project from me and Kevin Hart. Uh, SBH Productions, my man Chris Moreau, our guy Chris Moreau. If you enjoy Chris's brain, um, you know, that is a great documentary that he put together called The Summer of 85, which talks about the tragic bombing uh, of Little Africa in Philly uh, in the summer of 85 and the correlation with the Live Aid concert. So make sure you go get that on Audible right now. Uh, Also, Finding Tamika available on Audible right now. Those are the two projects we put out this year. And, you know, just keep watching the show, man. Hell of a week. Every Thursday night at 1130. You know, on Comedy Central, or you can scream it on Paramount Plus. We had a great show last week. Last week we had uh, uh, Marlon Wayans was on. 
uh, Jamel Hill, and a person who I think should be the next host of The Daily Show, Amber Ruffin. Um, hey. Because uh, Andrew Schultz don't want to do it. Nope. So those are my two picks. Or do what about you, bro? No. Or do a combination of Roy Wood and Amber Ruffin. Um, and I think Schultz would actually be the perfect person if they let Schultz be Schultz. They would never. Which they probably would. Also, that's too much, bro. Daily sucks. I can't think. Yeah, would, yeah, you I make it too much money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, not even that. Like, who, like, I can't care about enough shit every day. Yeah, I get it. There ain't enough political shit every day to talk about. Hey, trust me, I do. Ra- but that's why you mix it with culture, too, and social issues. You know 100%, what I mean? Yeah, 100%. yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's always a lot to talk about. But once know? a week, like what John Oliver does, what you do, like what we were doing with the Turn Your Phone, I like picking one thing a week Me too. that people genuinely have yeah. curiosity Me about, too. opening it up, talking about it, writing funny jokes about it. We all learn something. We yeah. laugh. We get ideally some like perspective on it. It doesn't have to mean the left or the right is right. Yeah. It doesn't matter, but this is what it is. And then we walk away. One thing. One thing. You nah. don't got enough, uh, nah, you right. know what I mean? Uh, desire for 40 fucking things. Imagine you know, forever I, doing that for it, seven years. Jesus. Yeah. And, and flew the Whoopi Goldberg. She did the show last week, hell of a week too. How was that? Oh, that was fantastic. <laughs> I saw that. Legend. Nah, that was fantastic. I mean, me and Whoopi got good report. Like, I, like every time I see Whoopi, it's always love. Like, since so she got the uh, the movie Till coming out, I call it Whoop. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Whoop. They tell me to call it Whoop. Wait, Till. You know, Till, like. Miss Goldberg, Whoopi. That's, yeah. I Till is Emmett Till? Yeah, Emmett Till. Yeah, yeah. She, oh, wow. Yeah, she's the EP on that. She plays uh, Emmett Till's grandmother, I believe. Great. Very heavy watch. I told Marlon Wayans. <laughs> me and Marlon Wayans were talking. I was like, yeah, man. I said, man, it's a, it's a tough watch. He goes, really? A movie about Emmett Till is a tough watch? No shit, Charlemagne. Oh, hey, don't watch Dahmer. It's a tough watch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> but he's right. It's like, yeah, it's heavy, bro. But make sure you uh check out Till. It's playing actually in New York and L.A. now, and I think it comes out everywhere on October 28th. But uh, this Thursday, we're back with another great show, uh, 1130 p.m. on Comedy Central. This week, we have uh, Michael Cohen, Michael Cohen, uh, Teslin Figaro, Jim Norton. Oh, love Jim. Yeah, Jim Norton and uh, Stephen A. Smith. Oh, yes. again? Yeah, this Thursday. On Wasn't Comedy Stephen Central. A. on before? No, he he was supposed to do it, and his schedule got messed up, okay. so he had to reschedule. So he just, he's Amazing. Doing, he's doing Great lineup. Thing. Dude, yeah. Jim, Jim is fucking hilarious. Oh, Jim's hilarious. Super hilarious. Let's do some Asking Idiots, man, because I got to go get my colonoscopy. Oh, got to get my anal checked. That's fire, dude. What, what we got, Taylor? That's so fire, dude. <laughs> he's getting opened up later. Getting opened up, bent That's over. Let me fire, see. bro. Sweet James Jones in the trick. Couldn't be it. No, a 44-year-old radio personality. Uh. No, I know a radio personality, and he's 44 years old. When he pop it from the back, I see the hairy asshole. All right, what we got, Taylor? Come on, bro. That was bars, bro. Keep spitting. That was Pimp C. Say what? That was Pimp C. That was, well, he didn't say that. Pimp C said, I got a young brown stallion, and she's 20 years old. When she pop it from the back, you see the hairy asshole. Mm. That's disgusting. <laughs> uh, let's see Pauly that is absolutely disgusting oh this is a good one Pauly underscore 8921 says what's your favorite album of all time what's your favorite album of all time Schultz um Kanye yeah Kanye no my favorite album of all time huh that's a great question maybe like Guns and Roses Appetite for Destruction Mm. That was that's my first one. CD I ever got I used to sell a lot of those when I used to do uh, telemarketing yeah um, and I, I, I was the guy that I'd have to call you on behalf of BMG. I used to work at this place called sure. Paragon Solutions. And I have to try to sell you 10 CDs for a penny. Yeah. That goddamn, uh, BMG, uh, BMI. Weapons, uh, weapon, what was it called? The Guns N' Roses, uh, what? Appetite of Appetite Masters. for Destruction. Appet- Appetite for Destruction. That and Leonard Skinner. Oh, wow. Back in Black. Ooh. Sold a lot of those. <laughs> sold a lot of those. But no, that one was fucking great. Uh, I'm trying to think others. What's my favorite album of all yeah. time? Probably Mary J. Blige in my life. Well, wow. Mary J. Blige in my life is probably my favorite album of all time. And that's just me spitballing, but I'm pretty sure that's my favorite album of all time. I'm trying to think. Al, what's your favorite album of all time? Blueprint. Uh, None? Blueprint. Bad Bunny. Oh, what? Blueprint? Yeah. <laughs> Bad Bunny. Oh, Blueprint. Yeah. Oh, I think you said Bad Bunny. Right. Bad Bunny is killing this shit. Yo, I don't know a Bad Bunny song. I feel so embarrassed. I don't know one either, but boy, Bad Bunny nah, is yeah. Puerto Rican what's and a bisexual. Bad Bunny one? He's bi? Yeah. yeah. Wait, really? I don't know if he's bisexual. He's a cross dresser, but I don't think he's come out as. I thought he said he would buy. I thought he said he would buy in a song or something. He didn't. He, no, he kissed a man at the fucking award show. I think that was just. Don't make me tell you about your people, yo. 
Why am you I telling what, you about you know Puerto what? Ricans? You got it. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. He is, kissed the guy at the award show. But does Bad Bunny smoke cocks? I don't think he has come out as actual bisexual. <laughs> I think he just does a lot of stuff for, Let me see. Uh, you know. Let me Google. You know how, like, when Madonna kisses... Well, yeah, uh, she's yeah, old. That's, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, yeah, I hear like the Harry Styles thing, where like, he, yeah, he's well, it's called queer baiting. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, where you like pretend you're gay, and then the yeah. gay people like it, so they come out and support. Yeah, yeah, allegedly, oh. I think. Oh, that's, that's what, that what you're doing right now. It's your colonoscopy every five minutes, talking about that shit. Listen, man, my whole body is queer baiting, bro. Look at me; <laughs> he's hips in this ass. So, <laughs> I am yeah. absolutely queer bait. Yeah, they yeah, see yeah. me, they want this worm, bro. They want this fish. They want to know what they can put on a hook to get me. <laughs> what? Am I using this right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fish boy. <laughs> <laughs> I am absolutely. Matter of fact, let me toot this thing up. Yeah. <laughs> they can really see what get queer it. bait look like. Damn, Taylor, right. Taylor just got jealous. <laughs> Taylor <laughs> always jealous. <laughs> Taylor, yo, Taylor be looking me up and down when I walk in with sweatsuits on. She be like, I don't feel my shit out like that. Hey, yo. <laughs> hey, yo. <laughs> hey, yo. Don't uh, be jealous. What would you do if you had a sex tape drop now from back in the day? I'd rather from back in the day than now. My shit was way more fire back then. What would I do? I would want to know. <laughs> my dick game was crazy back in the day, bro. I would want to know who the fuck got time travel. Because how the fuck would you get a sex tape from back in the day? I don't know. It was on your phone or some shit like that? I'm, I was born in the 1900s. I didn't have no fucking phone. Yeah, I forget. You're like on a dirt road and shit. Yes. We've had phones for decades. So you're a liar. You're a liar. I didn't get a phone. When did I get, first get a phone with a camera? It had to be in the 2000s. Yeah, I think in the 2000s. Yeah. For sure. for sure. No, 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 no. There were camera phones back in the day. That is back in the day. <laughs> no, nah, like in the Early 1900s. Now, there was camera phones it in the was? 1900s. Yeah, yeah, the late 1900s. Late 1900s, nah, there was camera phones. Yes, nah. the flip shit that had the little one. They yeah. even had internet on it. Yeah, nah, that bro, that count. Sprint, Sprint had the fucking camera yeah, phone, man. That was in the they didn't even make your dick look big. First one was 1997. Thank you. What did it look like? Thank you. Damn, colonoscopy. The first one was used in 1997. They're going to put a phone up your ass. The first camera phone was used in 1997. They're going to put a phone up. Yo, which phone you want? Yo, which phone you want, your ass, bro? Go on. Just one of them out. original ones? Yeah, you want one the original No, no, I don't want the original one. I want, like, do. the small joint. You, you put want one the one that Zach Morris used to make pizza for. Nah, the one that yeah, Nino Brown and Jack Boris had. <laughs> Zach, Zach Morris. God damn, if you can do that, if you can put one of those up your butt. That girls could do that, bro. Nah. Yo, girls' buttholes get mad big. <laughs> they, do. they do Kanye ain't talking about that but that's facts girls buttholes get mad big L it's crazy they just keep getting bigger and bigger L like Bandito why is that 4110 said what did you say <laughs> what did you say for real dude I, okay well, this is a good one scroll down yeah. Taylor let's, let's go to another one bro Andrew of course he would Andrew would you have Kanye on flagrant or the brilliant idiot not now not now responsible not fucking now. Journalism. Let me tell you something. When, when did that change? <laughs> Literally about <laughs> 10 minutes into that drink champs, I was like, yeah, I don't know if we can have this motherfucker on. <laughs> but before drink champs, I was like, yo, it might be fun, bro. I think we could get Kanye. Like, it'd be good to hear him out. 100%. Life was Day says, what if... But, yo, having Kanye on flagrant, him saying all that shit, and Dove being in the room as well, that would be... Unbelievable. Dove was losing mind. Oh <laughs> my God. He's been going crazy. The last. And we got a competition about who can lose more weight, me and Dove. So he's already like shaky and shit. You know, yeah. he's like low blood sugar. So <laughs> yeah. he's already on edge. What if Kanye is right in five years? We've seen it. CTG was wrong in the past versus Kanye. Here's the thing I've never been wrong about Kanye. Keep going. I just haven't. <laughs> what, if, what if he's and right when, in five when, years? What? When y'all go, go back and watch that interview now. And ask me what I was wrong about. Kanye said he was going to be a billionaire. Great. Congratulations. Only thing I ever told Kanye was, stop begging these motherfucking corporations. You're Kanye the fuck West. You're Kanye motherfucking West. Why are you out here begging these motherfucking corporations? Which in re and what I'm basically saying is, stop seeking white validation so motherfucking He don't want to put up his own money, bro. That's what it is. He did it once. He lost a lot. And now he don't want to do it anymore. Juan Cruz, 92. How come you never talk about Latinos doing good in the industry? We just did. We just talked about Bad Bunny. We definitely just talked about bad. Hell yeah. Now, that was before we even saw that, bro. And we're always talking about Latinos doing good. We love Latinos on this How podcast. How can you not love Latinos? Shout out Latinos. Name some other ones. What do you mean? Alex Media. <laughs> what do you mean? Yo, we got Bad Bunny. 
We got Daddy Yankee. Jay Cruz. Jay, Jay Balvin. Jay Balvin. Balvin. That's right. Jennifer Lopes. Letty Martinez. Letty. Angie Martinez. Angie. Who else? You know what I mean? <laughs> the Yankees. The Yankees. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yankees. Shout out the Yankees. Gotta shout out the Yankees. Shout out the Yankees right now. Um, you know what I mean? Latinos shout are Shout out fire. to the Bronx, yo. Shout out the Bronx. You know what I'm saying? Cardi B. That's isn't right. she Latina? That's right. If you if you had your own restaurant, what would your signature dish be? Yeah, because that WAP 265 question is nasty. Wait, what is that one? It's Apocalypse and Noah's Ark in modern day. God says you can bring only one person. Who is it? White! Wait, what? First of all, <laughs> they let them bring two animals, but they only gonna let us bring one person? Yeah. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. I'm not, oh, I, you're the other one. I'm out. I'm not doing it. You're not putting yourself in? You're putting... Nah. <laughs> which... <laughs> yeah. I got a party of six. <laughs> you know yeah, you only could choose two, though. Nah, well, we all out. What's up? What we going? What's, what's, what's in the next lifetime? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yo, that's crazy. We, we out. We gonna you got to go pick two of your daughters? No. Damn. We a party of six. <laughs> Sorry, that's foul. That's crazy. How is that foul? That's nah. crazy, bro. Yeah, you have how many kids? Yeah, I got yeah, yeah. four. Oh, okay, but yeah. you don't remember a, a few of them being annoying as fuck? <laughs> nah, man. <laughs> yeah, right. nah. yeah, man. We a party of six, like, baby. Nah. So it's, uh, it's like, yo, okay, well, I guess this is the end, y'all. Let's hold hands, you know? And <laughs> what's the song that we all know? Sing something from fucking Encanto. Speaking of Latinos. Bailamos. We don't talk about Bruno. We'll be a family of six singing We Don't Talk About Bruno. We don't talk about there. Bruno. Uh, local caster says <laughs> we don't talk, talk about, about Bruno. Bruno. Local caster, <laughs> we don't talk about Bruno. Have you watched Bruno. the Mercado's fire? Yeah, it did. Yeah. Sumele mano pa que de Bruno los motores. I don't think that's all. <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> last question. You never <laughs> heard that song? Sumele mano pa que me got Sumele mano pa que me got prende los motores. Sumele mano pa que me got prende los motores. Sumele mano pa que me got prende los motores. Que me de que me de duro. That's gasolina, bro. Okay, so Y'all don't even know the words to gasolina? Sumole mano pa que mi gata prende los motores. Pender, pender, pender. That's it, too. Yes. Pender, pender, pender. Pender, pender, pender. pender, 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 pender. Actually, nailed that. That's fine. Yeah. Sumole mano. Joey G244 says, if you Raise have... your hand if the pussy turns on the motor. What? That's what Daddy Yankee's saying. <laughs> Sumale mano, raise your hand if the pussy turns on the motor, if the pussy That's starts the say? engine. Sumale mano pa que mi gata, for my little, my little kitten. <laughs> Prende los motores, turn on, start the engine. If, this is a great segue. If you had your own <laughs> restaurant, what would, yes. be, what would be your signature dish? If I had, if I had a restaurant, what would be my signature? I can't say that word, bro. <laughs> I can't say that word. Signature dish. What? Signature, please. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, guys, you're crazy. My signature, my signature. Yeah. <laughs> you are crazy. <laughs> you're a wild guy. Now they're going to repeat that shit a thousand times and make me say the M word. God damn. Nah, for real. What would my restaurant oh, be? Man. I don't know, bro. Sumale mano, bro. Oh, man. Bum, ba, <laughs> what? Huh? Signature, don't play me. Yo, okay. <laughs> God damn you. All right. The fuck you mean? The answer is signature no. Yeah, <laughs> right? Don't know how to cook. All right. Uh, um, guys, can we be I think we got it. Can we can we just calm down here with all that? <laughs> I can't even say that word anymore, bro. Like that that's crazy how y'all made that word oh, into the N word. Man. Okay, so listen. Yes. We're about to leave. Yeah. But um we're either going to put this out on Wednesday or Thursday, Beautiful taping morning. it on a Tuesday. Beautiful morning. I would say the press conference from the Floyd family will be within the next 48 hours. Beautiful morning. Yeah, that's what I think. Tell so that, me something. So that lawsuit is going to be very interesting because I think that it's going to continue to allow us to have these conversations about free speech or what is the price of free speech. And maybe free speech isn't just all about whether or not you go to jail. Free speech is just about what will it cost to you? Mm -hmm. The price of free, the price of free speech is what will it cost to you? To you. Can you afford to say the things that you're saying? Not just even financially. Can you beat up the person you're talking about? That's, you that's know true. what I'm saying? Cause yeah, because free speech ain't free at the bar. That's right. If this person yeah. sues you, do you have money to fight in court? Does the, do you have a lawsuit to stand on? Like, what will the 
the cost be for what comes out of your mouth? That's that's the conversation I think is going to continue after the Floyd family sues. Uh, I don't. I, it's definitely going to be Kanye, but I don't know who else is going to be in the lawsuit. But I can't wait to see. Guys. That's right. As always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. But if you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. <laughs>